The simple answer is you don't. But there are some guidelines. So after a good couple of years, my old A for Media Toblerone finally kicked the bucket. I've been using this for streaming over on the gaming channel pretty much since I started the gaming channel. It's been a great capture card, it's worked great under Linux, but I finally replaced it with a new EVGA XR1 Lite. And you know, not being shaped like a Toblerone and also being considerably smaller makes it a bit less um, cumbersome to find a place for this thing to live. And it works basically just as well on Linux. There are some issues with the card itself, but these are issues with the card itself and not with Linux. But most capture card manufacturers don't even list Linux support. Barely they even list macOS support. So how do you know if something is actually safe to purchase? I'm going to be sticking with external capture cards because, you know, this is what I just have experience using. The internal cards, there's not really any sort of guideline to push you in the correct direction. These cards are basically the Wild West. My suggestion is if you want one, just start doing research on it. So modern capture cards have a lot of, you know, fancy bells and whistles on them. This has like a bunch of sliders and audio pass through. It's got like a built-in recorder and other dumb things like that. The important thing that you want to be looking for for Linux support is something known as a UVC device. USB video class, or sometimes called USB video capture. The name is kind of unimportant. What it does is what we care about. So UVC is, rather than having a specific video driver for that capture card, UVC is a generic video driver used for all manner of video devices, from capture cards to webcams to a bunch of, like, scientific equipment and random other things out there. UVC has had support in the Linux kernel since around 2007. And much like any modern system with a USB thumb drive, where you don't have to go and download any special drivers, you just plug it into your system and it magically knows what it is, magically knows what to do with it. With a UVC device, you just plug it in and it just magically works. It'll show up in things like Discord, it'll show up in things like OBS or anywhere else you might want to use a video device. Now, the good thing about UVC is UVC isn't some weird Linux standard that hardware manufacturers have to go out of their way to go and support. UVC is supported on Windows, it's supported on macOS, basically it's the generic way in most of computing that we have video devices working. Now, you might think here, that means everything's just going to be good to work. No, that's not how this goes. If that was the case, the video would be ending now. Now, just quickly before we get into that, it should be obvious, but just because a device sends the video to your system over USB, whether that's USB 2, USB 3, USB C, whatever it is, does not mean that it's going to be using UVC. You can have companies like Elgato, like Ava Media, like a bunch of other companies out there where the device will only function with special drivers. And as expected of pretty much a lot of hardware companies out there, there's not going to be driver support available for Linux. Now, there are some exceptions, but the vast majority, especially the mainstream companies, if they need drivers, avoid the device completely. There are on occasion third-party driver implementations, but unless you know the drivers work well, or you want to be a driver developer, I wouldn't be banking on that. Where this becomes really annoying, though, is sometimes there'll be versions of a device where one version requires drivers, the other just relies on UVC. The HD60S Plus, that works great under Linux. The HD60S and the HD60, they require Elgato drivers, and you're not going to have a good experience. So, 
because UVC is such a generic standard and most hardware manufacturers don't go out of their way to, you know, make sure things are known to be working on Linux, a lot of the time, especially on devices, even on devices that are well known to be UVC devices, on the product page, it makes no mention of the fact that it's using UVC. Now, this could just be a weird Amazon product page, but you'll notice even on the official website for the product, a lot of products don't mention UVC. Now, in some cases, it will be referred to as a driverless product because no extra driver needs to be installed to run it. Not that it's not using any driver whatsoever, but other times there will be no mention at all in any publicly available documentation. But we also have search engines. So usually it's a safe bet to say EVGA XR1 Lite UVC. Ava Media Live Gamer Portable 2 Plus UVC. And usually if it's a remotely popular device that anybody's really heard of, someone's probably done a review, someone's asked about it on Reddit, and someone out there will mention if it is using UVC. But here's the problem. There are devices out there that are totally UVC compliant that you can go and run on Linux without any problem whatsoever, like the ASUS TUF CU4K30. But if you want to go do things like modify the settings, update the firmware, the software to do so is proprietary to ASUS and will only run usually under Windows. I don't think that one has a macOS version, but generally you won't see a Linux version of any software like this. I can't speak for every single capture card out there though, but this ASUS device does have internal memory. So if you go and configure it under Windows, then you can go and move it over to Linux and make use of those settings, but it is going to be a less convenient way of working with it. Now, other devices like the Ava Media Live Gamer Ultra can be configured under Linux, but to update the firmware, the firmware updater is only available under Windows. But if you're doing stuff under Linux, this is sort of to be expected when you're dealing with hardware. If there is some sort of software center, some sort of management software, you're usually pretty sure that it doesn't run under Linux, unless it's made by a company that just openly cares about open source. My suggestion is if the product page makes any mention of software like this, it seems like a good idea just to avoid it. With things like that ASUS TOF, it is going to work, but it is just going to be a less convenient experience than just grabbing something that completely works under Linux. Now, the final category is the real problem. The devices that say they are UVC compliant, but in reality, they are UVC compliant-ish. They kind of support UVC enough. Ava Media has been fairly notorious for doing this in the past. The device will work perfectly fine under Windows. It might even work perfectly fine under macOS. But when you get to Linux, the support is so scuffed that a lot of the devices just don't really work. Now, it seems to be much better nowadays. It seems like a lot of the products coming out now are generally properly UVC compliant and will actually work. But when you are dealing with some of the older devices, when you're dealing with some of the generic devices you might find in places like eBay and Amazon, especially those devices, good luck. I've had luck with everything that I've bought in that category, but there's no guarantees. With those products from named companies though, the best bet is just to do a bit of research, just to see what the deal is with that specific device. Honestly, I wish I could just say this is the one thing you need to look for, say UVC, and then you're good to go. If you buy a UVC device, everything is just going to work. But I really cannot say that. I don't want each category to end with, hey, just do research on the product to see if it's going to work. But if I'm being completely honest about 
how you need to do this, that is what you need to do. The UVC guideline can send you in a direction and can help you filter out products, but doesn't really help you say if it's actually going to work well under Linux. On all but the most abstract devices out there, there's going to be forum posts, there's going to be YouTube videos, there's going to be reviews, and I've noticed that a lot of the reviewers, even reviewers who don't really care about Linux, will at least make a brief mention of it working under Linux, especially with more modern reviews as more gamers start to use Linux. And on rare cases, you might actually see devices that list out Linux support. Say, for example, with the devices from Cloner Alliance, like the Flint 4KP. Windows, Mac, Linux, and Android support. And I think my best suggestion, it's not like he really needs any extra attention from me, but if you want to buy a Linux capture card, go check out Epos Vox's channel. He has done a lot of reviews on a lot of capture cards and reviewed a lot of them specifically in the context of using them on Linux. The issues you might come across, ways you can address them, you know, giant lists of cards you might want to just specifically be looking at, and he's probably got the best resource, at least on YouTube, for these different capture cards you might want to be looking at. So do you have a capture card? Is it an Ava Media device? Is it an EVGA device? Maybe you bought, I don't know, a Mageweld device or an Elgato device or something else out there. Let me know what you have in the comment section down below. Or maybe you're just looking at something and you want to know what to buy and what you're thinking of. I would love to hear it. So if you like this video, I'm going to go and like the video. And if you really like the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, go check out my Patreon, subscribe, send me a pay link in the description down below. I've got a podcast called Tech Over Tea. I've got a gaming channel called Brody on Games. That's going to be it for me. And... I'm out.